contest is a semi-final match in the United World Championship Tournament. Introducing first from Killa Hills 10304, weighing in at 235 pounds, the Dirty Daddy, Chris Dickinson. To say the Dirty Daddy has been on fire here in the United Wrestling Network would be a huge understatement. Undefeated both on Primetime Live and in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Yeah, sort of fancies himself, I think, the MVP demanded competition. He's going to have his hands full tonight in the semifinals with Fred Rosser. No question about it, should be a good one. High stakes matchup. Introducing his opponent from Miami, Florida, weighing in at 239 pounds, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Russell. Five, the time has finally come. The minutes, the seconds, the anticipation. It's semifinal, and it's mean dirty. And dirty, I told you on social media, I told you earlier, if there's two things Mama Rasa didn't raise, Mama Rasa didn't raise no fool, and she didn't raise no punk. This is my moment, and I plan on capitalizing it, because it can't go any other way, except for my way, Mr. No Days Off, Fred Ross. Stage is set, a shot to advance to the finals. Unite Wrestling Network World Title Tournament. There you see Mr. No Days Off going right after him inside Cradle, trying to catch the Dirty Daddy sleeping. Usually it's Dickinson that's off to a quick start. Heads up move, but also perhaps as he goes for the cover, talking about Rosser, perhaps also desperation because of that injury brings it. 100%, you can see he has a very protective sleeve on his right arm, which is very severely damaged in that match against Redbeard. And the urgency that Fred Rosser came out here, whoa. Nice sweep there by Dickinson, but the urgency Fred Rosser came out, you can tell that he feels like he needs to end this matchup as quickly as possible. Into the uh, cover there, and side control as well, now by the Dirty Daddy, getting the advantage in the grappling game in the early going, and Fred Rosser gets to the outside. And again, that history of that elbow, he's had some trouble, including surgery in the past. Yeah, Tommy John surgery, which is rare for a professional wrestler to have to endure that kind of surgery, but he took just a nasty, nasty fall and then re-injuring it with that just vicious assault by Redbeard. You can tell he's just incredibly aware of it. It is at the forefront of his mind in the early going of this matchup. So well, with, with so that the, big brace, it's got, a, it's got a target on it to be sure. Absolutely, so the UCL is ulnar collateral ligament. It's the inside the elbow ligament, so a lot of uh, baseball pitchers. Oh, another pin attempt by Rosser. Oh, and an oh. omoplata transition by Dickinson. Beautiful, he is continuing to attack that damaged arm. That'll do some big damage, and now pulls him, the great white shark. Pulls him into deep water, into the deep ocean here, back to the center of the ring. Rear waist lock, and, and we'll see, you know, we caught up with Rosser as that arm is on the dissection pan early after going for several covers himself. He said, hey, I, I got cleared by a doctor. The doctor said that, you know, I, I could probably use another week to rehab it, but I'm missing no days off. I got a shot to move on in this tournament, and I'm gonna take it. Cover slam by Rosser, beautifully done by the prime time player on prime time live, looking to put him away. Yeah, no days off and no excuses. We know he is hurting, but he's gonna come at Dickinson with everything he's got, and he is he's had an answer. Dickinson came with a game plan of his own, said he's gonna pick him apart, obviously alluding to that in your arm. The roster's had answers. That seated splash, all the body weight down. That'll take the air out of you in a hurry. That is a lot of weight coming down on the chest of an opponent. It's gonna knock all the air out of them and start taking away some of their gas. One of the things you guys mentioned a moment ago was that he was cleared by medical staff. He was kind of cleared. The doctor said that he advised that he did not wrestle today. So he's in there against medical advice. But because it wasn't something like a concussion, they couldn't pull him from the match. So it goes to show how tough he is and how dedicated he is to winning this matchup. No doubt about it. And, uh, you know, despite his best judgment, Dr. James Morgan did give him the clearance to proceed here in the tournament. Knows how important it is. And the Dirty Daddy holding on to that arm bar. A few extra seconds. He had five to break. And now all over Rosser in the corner. He's been attacking that right elbow nonstop. He said that he smells, whoa, huge German suplex. Into the cover immediately now goes Dickinson looking to put him away. 
attack the arm. So now you got Rosser's got to think about that. That's always on the forefront of his mind, and then eats the big German suplex to boot. If I'm Fred Rosser, I might try and exploit what Peter Avalon did to uh, Chris Dickinson earlier in this tournament, went after that knee. You're right. He would absolutely be returning the favor of going after the weakest link on the body. With the amount of damage Dickinson's knee took in that last matchup, it would definitely even the odds if Rosser was able to attack him. Gasping for air right now as Rosser, as he is getting blanketed by Dickinson, who takes him off his feet with a single shot. Let's talk about the, look at that, clutching the arm as well. Again, Rosser in big trouble. And now using, using the rope here for added leverage. Boy, this is, this is devastating here. Yeah, you can tell that the brace is slow. Lid down a little bit. I'm not sure he has the same prophylactic protection from that ulnar collateral brace that he's wearing. Rosser to the outside of the safety for now. For now, Dickinson not going after him. Not sure it's going to stay that way for very long. Dickinson just showing an incredible amount of aggression from the start here. Giving Rosser a bit of a breather, but this has been super physical out of the gate. They both know what is at stake to go to the finals to crown the first ever United World Champion here for United World Network. Arm drag, takedown on that injured arm. More punishment being dished out. Uh, holding on to that grasp. If Dickinson can get the straight arm bar here, it might be enough to get him to the finals. And look at, he's got him in the center of the ring. Dickinson is close to the ropes. Rosser is not. Absolutely, so what he's trying to do, he's trying to get the arm out. I'd like to see Dick, Rosser, there we go. Exactly what I was gonna say. I'd like to see him get on top and try and stack him and look for some type of pin, just like he did there. This has been all action since the opening bell. Nice suplex by Dickinson into the cover again, going to high impact maneuvers. Ever since this thing started off, Rosser going for the inside cradle. There has been no surcease ever since. I think you hit the nail on the head that Rosser trying to win it right out of the gate, obviously, knowing that he is not 100%, but he is not going to go easy. He will sell himself dearly to try and get to the finals here, but he is in that deep water with that shark, Chris Dickinson. This thing getting physical in a hurry here, Blake, and Rosser going with the headbutt, follows up with a chop. I don't know if I'd use that arm, but he does. You know, the intensity in this matchup, both these guys realize how much is on the line. Winning this matchup could catapult either man's career into the Super Bowl. And you want to have, you know, we talked about Rosser going for the early, the, the quick finish. You want to have low mileage. You still got to win another match to take home the United Wrestling Network title in the finals in a couple weeks' time. And now look at this, just trading in the middle. Trade like Wall Street here on Prime Time Live. Yeah, these aren't even just regular strikes. They're throwing head but feet. They're getting vicious. This is turning into a complete fist fight. Talk about the road that they both took. Rosser surviving Eric Redner won that match by disqualification. And it was Dickinson defeating longtime uh, mainstay here in United, Peter Avalon. And now isolating the arm again. Oh, put a deep took the brace the off. Yep, took the brace off. That brace is doing a ton of support for that ulnar collateral ligament. He needs to protect that arm more than ever with that brace being off. No, 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 no. I, I love that no days off, no excuses. You know, we saw him when he was rehabbing earlier in the week. We, we saw him post that video, said, yeah, I'd love to face you at 100%, and mark my words, one day we will. But for now, I'm taking my shot, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm giving everything I've got. I have a ton of respect for him, for him to step up and take this challenge. Yeah, I mean, that's what we've seen from Fred Rosser throughout his entire career. And just look at the path that, you know, he took on Chris Masters and James Storm in an impromptu triple threat, survived it, won that matchup, and, you know, and then had to deal with that just vicious assault from Redbeard. So he is not going to go away easily. Yeah, but that, and holding on for dear life right now was Rosser holding on to the trunks. Anything to keep the great white shark from taking a big bite out of that injured arm. Oh my gosh, look at just wrenching, wrenching on the arm. You know, at what point does that arm just go numb and is completely useless for Rosser? I mean, in terms of it going numb, it might already be numb. I don't know how functional that arm is, but it's absolutely a big target and very vulnerable. We've seen Dickinson attack with strikes, moves like that, slams, and submission holds. He's doing everything he can to damage that right elbow of Fred Rosser. Dickinson in complete control right now, and Rosser's been wrestling everywhere. We've seen him in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, you know, all those battles got to take a toll on him as well. Yeah, racking up a lot of mileage, and you know, you you can't sell the dirty daddy short whatsoever. Has not lost here on primetime live. So he, he really has just been such a standout. So any sort of weakness, he is going to be able to take full advantage. He has his eyes firmly set on that championship. And you mentioned the attack of Avalon on the knee with the chair. 
in the quarterfinal matchup between Dickinson and Avalon. Uh, Dickinson, for now, looks to be getting around pretty well on that leg, on that knee, seems to be a non-factor, and Rosser has had no opportunity to, to try and exploit it. You know, we didn't see any type of protection on Dickinson's knee, and that might have been a smart thing. We don't know how bad it is, but there's no obvious target saying, hey, my knee's really messed up, you should smash it, just like Fred Rosser's elbow did. Maybe that might be some of the difference on why this target is going on. Dickinson also had a crucial extra week off in between this matchup, so that sort of definitely gives him an edge in this in terms of being able to heal up and be more at 100%. But with both these men scheduled, they're certainly not 100% right now. They have been giving it both barrels to one another. You make a great point, Jimbo, that he had a lot more time off to allow some recovery. Fred Rosser's got seven days of recovery, and after that attack by Redbeard after the match, I'm surprised to see him, wow, well, you see him injure his elbow by striking with it there. It takes a lot of out, out of his game plan. He loves those big forearm shots, but right now it's, he's gonna have to swing with his left, and, and now just almost by instinct throwing the right, and that's a sacrifice play. Doing more damage, more damage to himself, perhaps than his opponent. Sends Dickinson to the apron. Oh my God, look at this! Trying to suplex him to the floor, what's he doing? He's getting desperate, looking for whatever he can to get the finish. Oh, wow. Clopped him right on that hard edge of the apron, and now, Oh my gosh, the pendulum of momentum has switched. Here's an opportunity for Rosser. That lower back of Dickinson could be shot. What power by Fred Rosser there, really digging down deep to pull out, you know, swinging for the fences to try and move on here, and that could turn the tide in this matchup. You know, this might give Rosser a few moments to, you know, look at this big slam, wow. This is absolutely gonna give Rosser a few moments to recover, but the amount of damage on that right elbow, he's not gonna be able to recover for weeks for it, likely. We don't even know if he makes it to the finals, if he'll be 100% at the finals. So he needs more than just that big slam to win this matchup. Still to come later on in our main event, it'll be two great veterans going at it. Mike Bennett in De and Davari in the other semifinal matchup. You gotta believe that they're stretching out, taping up, getting ready, but you know they got an eye on this as well. And we have never seen Dickinson down for this extended amount of time. He begged for competition. He is getting that and more from Fred Rosser tonight. Got to make a point here. I mean, Dickinson in real trouble. Rosser maybe would have gotten the count out victory if he stayed inside. That would be enough to get you to the finals. But I think the primetime player, Mr. No Days Off, he wants to prove a point. He Absolutely. wants to beat him in the middle. Absolutely. That's the reason he got in here. He came in here to prove that he is a world champion competitor. He wants to get the win the right way. And I really respect that as another competitor. We've seen Dickinson endure a whole hell of a lot, even outside the United Wrestling Network. Took on John Moxley at Bloodsport. What a battle that was. And now oh, up top, maybe he was trying to size him up for that gut check. We saw him put away Chris Masters with that a few weeks ago. And now fighting back into this thing is the Dirty Daddy, the Filthy Father. The way Rosser was able to get him elevated, he didn't quite get that gut check, but he's using one arm and he's still making a lot of stuff happen. Man, he uses that elbow again to strike and damages it again. You can see how much mileage that right elbow has. It's a smart move by Dickinson to remove that brace. Swing and a miss there. Another big power slam. That has been a key weapon in the arsenal for Rosser, who tries to do the unthinkable. And man, oh man, only a sliver of light between the referee's hand and the canvas. I'm a big fan of the aggression that Chris Dickinson has, but every now and then aggression works against the guy. We saw him rush in there against Rosser, and Rosser counted him with the power slam. As we mentioned though, Jim, you know, he's been in there. Rosser has with the big and the bad. Eric Redbeard, Chris Masters, James Storm. James Storm we'll see later on defending the uh, NWA World Tag Team titles. And I think again, not having the use of that arm took him a little bit of extra time to try and get up top. Speaking of Rosser. Definitely slowed him down and now Dickinson making him pay. And once again, attacking that arm, the Dirty Daddy, seeing more blood in the water. Oh, he caught him there. Oh, bad landing for the Dirty Daddy. Little shades of the Belfast brawler fit Finley there using the, the skirt as a weapon. And you, and you out all the stops. Brilliant move by Rosser. You know, sometimes things happen where you just happen to fall in there and get stuck on that. And Fred Rosser's got the opportunity and he is taking full advantage of it. And now a, a snap mayor on the outside. We've got a count on as well. They gotta be leery. And a seated splash again, but nothing to cushion the blow here. You know, that shot then right down onto the concrete floor. 
but a double count out here would give somebody, you know, a, a, in essence, a freebie if they make it to the finals in our main event. Yeah, what an interesting thing that would be if that next matchup we have ends up being our finals match. Basically would be for the title. History would be made right here, but not the case right now. And a gator roll by ah, Dickinson. Dickinson used that gator roll to put him in. Whoa, whoa, quick tap. Man, you can tell how fast he tapped it. That elbow, seriously, oh, he's not letting go. Somebody needs to do something about this. Oh, boy. Yeah, and the referee has here to get physical. Here is your winner, advancing to the finals of the United World Championship Tournament, Chris Dickinson. Dickinson was indeed a great white shark, and he was hungry. And he had the main course in the form of the arm of Fred Rosser from start to finish. I mean, Rosser started this thing in a pit that he had to climb out of with that injury. He came very close to doing just that. But Dickinson would not be denied. Another intimidating performance by Dickinson. You could see the referee threw up the X. I think Fred Rosser is seriously injured. We have some guys taking him to the back right now. We'll let the people at, no, at home know uh, what his condition is coming up. Looking back at some of the action, that big slam on the apron. Here is the beginning of the end. The gator roll, you know, had him disoriented. And then that straight arm bar, Fujiwara style, really wrenching back. Yeah, and he was able to set that submission up by using that gator roll to get to the middle of the ring and prevent the rope break. Fantastic submission grappling by Chris Dickinson. Gutty effort by both men to determine who should go to the final on one half of the bracket. Both of them should hold their head up high, but it is the Dirty Daddy with his eyes on that goal.